Today's episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Little does she know how true that is. Also, someone's been on the Disney World ride. Didn't quite get the tempo right. Bad luck to be singing about pirates with us mired in this unnatural fog. Mark my words. Gibbs already being superstitious, or maybe just a little stitious? I intend to see to it that any man who sails under a pirate flag or wears a pirate brand gets what he deserves. A short drop and a sudden stop. And some character continuity from Norrington. Actually, I find it all fascinating. Yes, that's what concerns me. Yeah, you wouldn't want her to be a pirate king one day, would ya? My name's Elizabeth Swan. Will Turner. I'm watching over you, Will. So is it still a meet-cute when they're minors? Is that allowed? Oh, right, never mind. He fancies you, you know? Right, you mean this guy who was a full-grown adult when I was a child, not, not creepy at all. Perfectly balanced. As all things should be. At least when we're talking about edged weapons and genocide. <clears throat> Impressive. Ha! <laughs> You've seen Legolas do the impossible with a bow and now be amazed with his sword juggling. Will, how many times must I ask you to call me Elizabeth? At least once more, Miss Swan. Flirting? It failed flirting, really, since she hates it. Yeah, he's still trying, though. Ah, there he is, the old Keith Richards impressionist himself. <laughs> oh, and they start the camera move so high we don't realize he's on a tiny boat. So they get to eat their cake and have it, too. He's introduced as a god pirate among men, but in a tiny sinking ship. Even the wind cooperates and is a little excessive for being only as high as he is, but making us think he's at the top of an 80-foot mast. Even the score announces and solidifies his importance, like the entire movie knows he's the man, even if his boat doesn't. <laughs> and so far, the best pirate we've ever seen. What do you say to three shillings? And we forget the name. First line is as piratey as can be as well, as is his first interaction with non-pirates. We really do take this performance for granted now because it just is Jack Sparrow. But the, well, this, was a pretty bold choice when you realize it was mostly just based on a rock star. All the credit goes to Johnny Depp for inventing this character's characterizations. Let's be serious here, Johnny Depp is always a win. <laughs> this smile. Like I said, there's no real shit as can match the inter- Side characters, man. The recurring side characters in this movie steal the show in their own way. No. Into commandeer one of these ships, pick up a crew and tortuga, raid, pillage, plunder, and otherwise pilfer my Weasley black guts out. Honesty. I'm a bit nervous myself. I'm gonna be mentioning this a lot, but the setup and payoff in this film is top shelf. We know that as soon as Elizabeth puts on the corset, she can't breathe. Then every time the camera cuts to her, she looks strained and is fanning herself until finally she passes out and sets the whole movie in motion. And then they made me their chief. <laughs> And the cut to the end of the story is hilarious either way. But is, is Jack a time traveler? Doesn't that basically happen in Dead Man's Chest? Johnny Depp dives like an Olympian, and our first Heart of Gold moment. So, maybe obvious, since the pirates are called to the medallion and we see a visible shockwave from it hitting the water. The wind clearly changes, the flag blows in the opposite direction, and if you remember, it was a clear day, sunny even. And now the clouds are getting darker than they were, and there's fog rolling in all around them after Jack saves Elizabeth. Such great attention to detail. Also, now that I'm realizing it, this was another setup and payoff since Elizabeth's dream is what made her pull the medallion out of the drawer and put it on, and the only reason she didn't put it back in the drawer is because her father interrupted her. Are you decent? Uh, yes. Yes. I remember being so struck by how filthy Jack's hands are the first time we see them, even after coming out of the water as if he's permanently stained. But, you know, not like later on. A compass that doesn't point north. Ah, but Norrington is holding it and it does point to Jack. Do with that what you will. One good deed is not enough to redeem a man of a lifetime of wickedness. So it seems enough to condemn him. And Jack with the timeless words of wisdom right out of the gate. Some ingenuity, double ingenuity, he went up and the dock became a danger trap. <laughs> and even the soldiers who aren't shooting muskets are closing their eyes. It makes sense no one is on target. <laughs> And the pirate's motif is heard for the first time. Perfect timing, really, with Jack pirating it up in spectacular fashion. Resourcefulness. Is this is this going to be a thing? Does Jack Sparrow always do stuff like this? You seem somewhat familiar. Have I threatened you before? Ha! Because he looks like his dad. I mean, he doesn't really, but we only see him covered in gross stuff, so who could say what young Stellan Skarsgård looked like? There's definitely no pictures of that, so... According to my new friend and channel I recommend, Jill Barrup, so that's twice in two videos that I'm recommending her, but according to her stage combat experience, this is actually a pretty accurate and realistic duel. You should check out her video if you're into that sort of thing. She actually breaks down this entire scene and even talks about characters' motivations going into the fight, so, you know, 
But if I were to add my own opinion, I love the way Jack tests Will initially with just one attack, and when Will easily parries, he then comes back with multiple attacks in a row, but it's not until Will is on the attack that Jack actually concedes that Will is no slouch. You know what you're doing, I'll give you that. But how's your footwork? If I step here... I mean, really, he managed to challenge his skill, preying on Will's rule following and maybe a little ego while tricking him into switching positions so he could escape. Come on, Jack Sparrow the pirate, Captain Pirate. And now the score is in time with each Cutlass connection? Anti-Stormtrooper aim? And going from a simple sword duel, the first in the movie, introducing us to how swords are used to fight, immediately upping the stakes with a glowing hot poker with sparks was a fun choice. And I jumped the gun on the escalation talk. And Will does almost everything in his power to give away that the blacksmith is sneaking up behind Jack. Like, I'm sure he was just surprised to see him awake and probably worried what would happen to him if Jack noticed, but three full looks. You've assisted in the capture of a dangerous fugitive. Just doing my civic duty, sir. And just like in normal work, in hero work, Will's boss takes all the credit. I can comfortably say I never even noticed the flute sounds in the score, and that's odd because I'm the score guy. A win that probably only works after you know what the Black Pearl is, but the first time we see it approach like this is exhilarating. What's that? <laughs> Saving your intended's father. Never leaves any survivors. No survivors. And where do the stories come from, I wonder? So is Jack Sparrow, like, the smartest of the pirate captains? Is that part of his thing? I just never realized it. I know it's like a logical thing to ask, but humans aren't super logical. Huh, well, good luck ever getting me to side with the pirates now. <laughs> yeah, anti-stormtrooper aim. Yeah, blowing up the gallows. Smart play, pirates. Smart play. I mean, we could probably use this setup and pay off wind counter, but I'm not doing it, because it's just like screenplay 101, they just do it really well in this movie. But that makes these Chekhov's burning hot embers. <laughs> Expectation subversion. You thought she was going to have a sword for this fight the first time you saw it, but instead she uses her brain. Pale! We know you're here, Puppet! I always just thought they were saying Puppet with a British accent, but I learned something new today, so you get to too. Hello, Puppet. And she'll go without a fuss. We must honor the code. Honor? Or I guess it's honor. A moon to bone. Wait, that, that means this could actually be a pirate arm? <laughs> hey yo, it's not just pirates, it's zombie pirates, or skeleton pirate, undead pirate, cursed pirates. There were a lot of long words in there, miss. We're not but humble pirates. I'm disinclined to acquiesce to your request. <laughs> Smart pirates. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. Look, I know sequels might challenge this line, but as it stands right now, 41 minutes into this movie, Jeffrey Rush is the best cast to ever play a pirate in the history of the universe. Depp is great and brings his own weirdness, but when we're talking about pirates, it doesn't get better than Barbosa. Guidelines than actual rules. Welcome aboard the Black Pearl. Ask him where it is. Make a deal with him, he can lead us to it. Pirates who invaded this fort left Sparrow locked in his cell. Ergo, they are not his allies. Ah, I see Jack isn't the only critical thinker in the Caribbean. We're gonna steal the ship. Commandeer. We're gonna commandeer that ship. Nautical town. Nautical vocab lesson. I love a good tricky cut that breaks the space-time continuum. And everybody catches on quick, so that's the secret. As long as people are okay with you breaking space-time, you're good. They just broke physics anyway, unless they have 300-pound weights in their boots. This is either madness or brilliant. It's remarkable how often those two traits coincide. Seriously, just a genius wordsmith. We are taking over the ship. I of us! Ah, apparently Will does know some nautical terms. It means stop. <laughs> the things you notice when you start really looking. Will, the non-pirate, non-sailor, trying to take orders from Jack, the guy who can ride a mast into port. <laughs> Jack knows they shoot with their eyes closed, but Will doesn't. He's disabled the rudder chain, sir. <laughs> now that I think back, they use the lobster trap for that. <laughs> this was the first time I realized getting hit by a huge ship would be less like I assumed. You'd just softly be brushed aside instead of more like a freight train. It was a good lesson to learn it. 18. That's got to be the best pirate I've ever seen. And I'll give him credit for admitting the truth. That is without doubt the worst pirate I have ever seen. I'm not a simpleton, Jack. You knew my father. And I'll give the writers credit because it was broadcast to the audience that Jack only cared once Will said his name. But they let it ride until now so that Will gets his way, but then also confronts Jack about it. 
Oh man, the Black Pearl must be attacking Tortuga? Nah, just people having a good time. Giselle. <laughs> it was she. Well, I may have deserved that. More honesty. No better to wake a man when he's sleeping. It's bad luck. And a little telegraph to remind us that we've already met Mr. Gibbs. He's the stitious guy. Well, you know better than me the tales of the Black Pearl. Gibbs gets to play coy a little longer about Jack's actual relationship with the Black Pearl and treated as some mysterious ship, not one Jack was the captain of since the Aztec gold curse happened after Jack was marooned. What makes you think Bob Bozro will give up his ship to you? Let's just say it's a matter of leverage. And a callback that would get Will's ears to perk. He also said if that be the case, you'll be done in with the crew and you'll be naked. <laughs> Even the big bad pirates didn't make her wear a corset. When you can't taste food, watching others eat becomes your kink. Just ask a pregnant woman about sushi and coffee and deli meat. I know, but trust me, it's a thing. Goodness, this video is going to be long, but how do I ignore Barbosa casually pouring wine as the goblet slides across the table with the sway of the ship? I don't, that's how. Ah, someone's seen Indiana Jones. Stay away from the dates. Arr. So we're just gonna win the R's, cause that way I get to say R. And now the full reveal. This movie is a fun pirate adventure with an amazing cast if they were just normal pirates, but also cursed pirates. What a movie. I can't believe the poor monkey is cursed too. Do they really understand the consequences of their choices? Do curses have no grace? You best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Again, this is one of those movies. Is every line a win? Probably. The likelihood that I'm going to miss your favorite seems high because as I watch this movie, it's it's just everything. Everything Depp or Rush does. Even a fake out laugh. What are you looking at? Back to work. <laughs> And another amazing motif, my favorite part always being this dissension down at the end. I want to talk about how this is Zoe Saldana's first big movie, but when I say that, Julia gets upset because center stage shan't be ignored if Zoe Saldana's early years are to be discussed. But really, I just want you to notice the faces Will is making in the background acting all tough. Hi, that one. What say you? Aye. Though, Zoe the pirate is just another reason to love her. <laughs> Sometimes it's the moments they barely draw attention to. What's he looking at? No clue. Probably nothing. No, 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 no. It's frightful bad luck to bring a woman aboard, sir. It'll be far worse not to ever. And another quick setup and payoff. Zoe isn't Calypso, though, so this is a lie. So, you might think that the guy who walks like this would have a hard time standing up on a ship, but then you realize that Jack probably spends more time on the swaying ocean, and so he may be permanently acclimated to ocean balance, meaning dry land would be hard to walk on. Sort of like that feeling you get after spending too long on a treadmill. Listen to that sound design. You can feel the giant wooden planks bending and stressing. Marbosa is really the captain's captain, even standing for the row into the cave. When you run out of names for your movies, just let the parrots start naming sequels. Even a five second shot from underneath showing how many hammerheads are in the water as the interceptor snaps off the top of a sunken ship's mast is gorgeous. The sound design, again booming. They marooned Jack on an island and left him to die not before he'd gone mad with the heat. So that's the reason for all the... <laughs> Why does there have to be a reason? Also, there's nothing saying that wasn't how Jack always was since Gibbs hadn't met him yet. <laughs> what were we saying about setups? And you can buy an eye what actually fits and it's made of glass. This one does splinter something terrible. Also, I think it's a good time to talk about a tiny detail that always impresses me, the jaundice in the pirate's eyes. And each man Jack you here has proved his mettle a hundred times over. This is what separates good captains from great captains. He could just throw the coin in and be on with it, but he gives his crew credit and reaffirms their relationships. It's also a great reminder that as bad as they are, they just want to break the curse and they won't even kill Elizabeth if they don't have to. I say we cut her throat. I mean, some are nicer than others. You're not dead. No, he shot me. <laughs> Appropriate reaction. You know whose blood we need. I know whose blood you need. And the ever-changing allegiance of Captain Jack. He never goes too far that you start to dislike him, but we always understand he's got to do what he's got to do to survive. Can't y'all remember Captain Jack Sparrow? Look, Jack Sparrow, I mean Captain Jack Sparrow, is known far and wide. Captain Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow! Even when people don't know him, they know him. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. You can try to be known by your tattoos and exploits, but I think a much better way is to use social media, and today's sponsor, Skillshare, has just the course for you all about social media marketing from Kat Coquelette. 
If you don't know yet, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes designed to help you create new skills or expand ones you already have. Her class covers growing your followers, increasing engagement, which is people actually interacting with your posts, and strengthening your brand. She also talks about ways to help you go viral. It's a great class with lots of things I'd never even considered. Or if you're more into illustration or photography or animation, even making short films, Skillshare has a teacher and a class for that. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month, but the first 1,000 of my fans to click my link in the description and join will get two months for free, so you can try some different classes out. So check it out, link is in the description. They're always adding new classes and topics. I know you'll get a lot out of it, and it's a huge help to the channel. Thanks for sticking through to that. Sorry this is a part one, but part two will be next week. This movie turned out to be longer and better than I remembered. And I know it's an important one to a lot of you, so I'm gonna try to hit everything I can. Thanks, see you next week.